self-tests. From pregnancy tests to IQ tests to your Hogwarts house to anxiety tests to we know where you'll meet your future spouse based on your answers to these questions. Which is, by the way, such an easy question to answer. If you're serious about such tests, the answer will probably be Starbucks. Anyways, today we're going to have a little chat about one of the most famous self-tests on the planet. The Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI. Which you probably already know for its famous personality codes such as INFJ or ENTP or ISTJ or ISFP. According to the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, you can be one of the 16 different personality types. And according to some or a lot of researchers, it is, to put it in a polite way, male cattle poo. Welcome to Brains Applied. Before I dive into the issues, let's give you a short overview of the history of the type indicator. We have to go back into time before the 2020 apocalypse. Somewhere after the first time the Germans got their ass kicked, but before the great German mustache made his entrance. It was the year 1921 when the Swiss psychiatrist and psychologist Carl Jung had released a book in which he explained one of his conceptual theories. If you don't know who Carl Jung is, just remember that he's a pretty famous and important psychiatrist. According to him, there were eight psychological types of humans. Four of them being perceiving people who prefer to use their sensation or intuition while the others were judging people who prefer thinking or feeling. According to him, these dominant functions were influenced by whether the person was an introvert or an extrovert. Jung's theory inspired Catherine Cook Briggs and her daughter Isabel Briggs Myers to start researching personality types, which led to the development of the first Briggs Myers Type Indicator Handbook which was renamed as Myers-Briggs Type Indicator several years later. The test was first published in cooperation with the Educational Testing Service, but the publishing rights were later sold to the Consulting Psychologists Press, who started to popularize the test. This company happily helps you to discover yourself for the price of about $21 for the basic report or $49.95 for the full report. Or if you want to become a certified instructor who can administer the test, they'll be glad to help you out for 2,495 beautiful George Washingtons. On a yearly basis, the company makes a profit of about $20 million from this test alone. If you want to know how much $20 million is, it's enough to buy 5 million pet rocks. You can use it to buy 50 decommissioned nuclear missile silos, or you can buy a Russian T-14 Armava tank and a Russian Atlant Zeppelin to transport your tank in. However, if you thought $20 million would make you rich, remember that you'd be worth just about 0.017% of what Chef Bezos is worth. Just for the sake of making a comparison, the average erect penis is about 2% of the average male body volume, according to this question on answers.com. So in bodily terms, you would be as rich as about 1% of Jeff Bezos' penis. But I might be getting off topic here, so let's get back to Carl Jung, shall we? One of the problems with the development of the type indicator is that Jung's theory was conceptual and had been based on observations and interviews, and not on empirical studies. This is a grave mistake according to today's scientific standards. And Catherine and Isabel, who hadn't enjoyed any formal psychological education, somehow turned his theory into a framework, while adding the judging, perceiving dimension like it was a separate thing. And they didn't do any empirical research before finishing the type indicator. This is, if you don't know, not the best way of doing science. An additional issue with this framework is that no one strictly fits into these categories. Let's illustrate this with an easy question. Are you always an introvert or are you always an extrovert? 
Even Jung said that there's no such thing as a pure introvert or a pure extrovert. Like many things on earth, the division of people along the introvert-extrovert dimension is following the bell curve. Meaning that most people will be somewhere in between introvert and extrovert and only few people will be on the extreme sides. Because of this black or white setup however, there is a chance of about 50% that when redoing the test after several weeks you will get a different outcome compared to the first time you took the test. Just because you answered as little as one question differently. But no matter what personality type you end up with, the descriptions will always fit because they make use of something which is called the Barnum effect or the Fourier effect. It's the same basically. It's a common psychological phenomenon whereby individuals give high accuracy ratings through descriptions of their personality that are supposedly tailored specifically to them that are in fact vague and general enough to apply to a wide range of people. It's an effect that's commonly used in practices such as astrology and mentalism to make good predictions. And it's quite obvious that these descriptions have to be very vague because each personality type has to fit a major part of the world's population. And in addition to the vagueness, they spoil every person with compliments and positive character traits, which we of course won't disagree with because who doesn't like to hear positive things about himself? INFJs for example are insightful, creative and visionary, with a deep faith in personal insights. They're sensitive, compassionate and deeply committed to personal values. They're loyal to people and institutions that exemplify... <laughs> So, why do people believe it? For the sake of scientific authority, there are plenty of studies that support the type indicator. However, an estimated 30 to 50% of these MBTI research papers are in some way or another linked to the CPP, the organization that makes an estimated $20 million from the test each year. And in contrary, there also are plenty of studies that are not that fond of the type indicator. Yet many people, many government organizations and one in every five Fortune 1000 companies have invested a lot of time and money in using this test during the hiring process or in other ways. Obviously, they're not very eager to admit that this was a waste of money. Substitutes such as the Big Five and the newer Hexaco model are available and they are backed by science. However, since they've been developed by many researchers in many different studies, it's hard to commercialize them. Leaving the Myers-Briggs type indicator as the supposed champion of personality tests. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I would highly recommend you to stop wasting time on useless personality tests. Instead, you can do something more useful and more fun, like pressing the like button and the subscribe button to support my channel. And if you do so, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. And I... We'll see you guys later.